Apparently, these numbers also get inflated because in the Black Book, they counted potential people. They counted people who might have been born. 13 million people who might have been born were counted in the numbers. People who never even existed. These weren't fetuses that, you know, happened to be part of double homicides where mothers got shot or some shit. Yeah, anyway, if you are familiar with Shadowversity, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I want to go ahead and clarify though i do not think shad is a bigot i do not think they are a bad person i don't even think that they're malicious in any way shape or form where this is concerned i just think that in this topic that we're going to be talking about that he's just wrong and and harmfully so in this case uh, but we'll get into fan art first and then we will get into that uh, this first piece is one from Kidderdoodle. Uh, it is actually a coloring of a piece that they had done previously. Uh, and I'm definitely scrolling through Twitter, uh, not Twitter, uh, Discord to get to what they said about it. Uh, and yeah, and here we got color. There we go. For some reason, it did not keep me on the point in Discord that I needed to be. So that was weird. Anyway, the next one we have is from Sky Lily. They said they're kind of nervous about sharing this, uh, but they wanted to try something new using a phone app. This was basically a test to play around with the app they had planned originally. Uh, they had more planned originally, but what they planned was more detailed, and it turns out it's harder to do that on a cell phone. Uh, but, so, this is what they mean, though. This is actually an animation. It's just... Whereas most GIF animations tend to loop, this one does not. But yeah, honestly, I actually like it a lot. It looks really cool. Just having the uh, having the light up there. It looks very, very neat. So, as always, thank you all for your fan art submissions. It is greatly appreciated. I will go ahead now and get to the topic at hand here. So, there is a podcast type deal uh, called Night's Watch. Uh, and in this, at least this particular episode, Shad and a couple others talk about uh, Games Workshop, uh, Matrix, Spider-Verse, other shit, uh, nerd stuff. It's basically like Sunset City, but with, with real people, which is makes it less than Sunset City. It's better when it's cartoons talking about the news. Uh, anyways, anyways. Let's go ahead and get into what is being talked about and why there's a bit of an issue here. So uh, context, apparently Games Workshop uh, had a whole they're, they're the people who make Warhammer uh, and they had a whole to do uh, with talking about some of the far right extremists who had become enamored with Warhammer and had started groups. Uh, kind of makes sense considering that there are some groups within Warhammer lore that are literally fascists and some people tend to gravitate towards those a lot. So I can understand Games Workshop talking about that, but this prompted a conversation from Shad and folks. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. No, seriously, this should be going because they are going so far in trying to attack and vilify, they're legitimately trying to vilify regular people who are just even slightly to the right, but they're not calling out any of the extreme left. And yep. there's literally like Warhammer Marxist groups. Yep. Like. All right, so let's go ahead and, 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 and handle this point right now. This is a fallacy. If I am calling out one group for their misbehaviors, I am not beholden to, uh, to take other groups I am not beholden to to vilify every group possible that could be a problem if I am just in a single piece focusing on one group. But also this horseshoe theory bullshit where Marxists and what he says, regular people who just happen to be slightly on the right. I don't know what he means by that. I don't because 
I would need to know the exact things that Games Workshop is criticizing. In America, when you say regular person who's slightly to the right, for other countries, that sounds like a right wing extremist. Our, you know, moderate conservatives are very extreme by comparison when you bring them into the context of other countries. Likewise, our Democrats act a lot more like centrists than they do leftists. That, that To me, that fully says that Games Workshop supports communism. Mm. Yeah. What? What? Okay, okay. How? If Games Workshop criticizes people on the right and then does not criticize someone on the left, whatever random grab bag person you want, how does that make them support communism? If I criticize X, it does not suddenly make me align with B. One of the most evil ideologies in human history. Yes, the like, most evil ideology. Like the, like the most communism kill, has killed more innocent people than Nazis did. And there's the piece I wanted to talk about. That one right there. Shad Zanasi, he's literally just shit posting. Are are you sure? Are you sure they're just shit posting? Do you have evidence? Can you get in their brain? Do you have the ability to go into their head and pull that information out? Is that a thing you can do? Because if not, said it's all a LARP, they're always LARPing. You can't you can't do that though. You can't do that. You can't do this thing where you go, every time somebody says something I disagree with, it's a LARP. Every time somebody says something I disagree with, it's a joke. It's just a joke. It's just a LARP. It's just a joke. It's just a LARP. It's just a joke. It's just a LARP. We get that all the goddamn time. If you are a huge channel on the internet and you say something in here and you say it in, in full and full breadth, Sorry, no, we can't just do this fucking it's just a LARP thing. Y you can't. Unless Shad is willing to come out with a video where he just says, no, I was just LARPing. I was just kidding. I didn't mean the things that I said live, recorded and edited for you to listen to. Then I'm not going to come off this. Oh, by, by, oh, by what is it making you? Well, the the estimation is between ninety to one hundred and thirty million for communism. But when you're in the hundred, when you're in the t dozens of millions, yeah. you know, kind of defeats I, the purpose. Of... And some of the worst kind of things communism supports: dehumanizing people. That I yep. just. How does communism dehumanize people? Let's. If I were to say in in a, a breath, what communism is, it is a moneyless classless stateless society how does that dehumanize individual people it it, it it doesn't now now uh yes i do believe that they're just yanking this all from the black book the black book of communism by uh kotoi am i am i saying that right probably not uh freya correct me if i on the on the phonetic pronunciation of the author uh i believe it's kotoi but again could be wrong but let's go over some shit. Communism's killed a hundred million people, right? iPhone, Venezuela, 100 billion dead. Ooh. You know that meme. You know that one, right? That's all this is. Now, now, I can I can do that joke, but we're actually gonna get into some context here. Let's learn some history. I know Shad loves history, because again, I've consumed a lot of his content. And again, I want to reinforce, I do not dislike this person. I do not dislike this content creator. I, in fact, am a fan of this content creator. I like the things they put out on their channel. So, the first thing we're going to need to talk about is what do we call a death under communism? If we are just talking about people who die while there are communists in power, then congratulations, capitalism has killed more people than communism. That's easy. But let's talk about how the Black Book works here. The Whenever you hear communism killed 100 million people, that is straight from Katoy's Black Book of Communism. Now, it should be noted that when he was writing that book, his peers 
straight up said that he was trying to get to the 100 million number and that was that was a thing that he did in the beginning before he even started tallying up the numbers he was actually obsessed with getting to the 100 million number this causes people to use sloppy and biased scholarship think of a creationist who starts off with the assumption that evolution is not true when they are studying science they are going to use that to color everything that they work if you would like an example of this please look no further than uh the discovery institute now the first thing to note is that the black book, where this information comes from, does not distinguish between communism and socialism, and more importantly, authoritarianism. Now, how are these numbers calculated? Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Also, I want to give a quick shout out to Vicky1999. Regardless of any other issues that I have... Uh, with any content creators at all, they actually did list their sources uh, for what they were talking about here so that I had plenty of research to put a, a few notes together uh, from their video and the reading that they had there. So breakdown here, we have 20 million people who died in the USSR uh, that are calculated in this total. 65 million people in China 1 million people in Vietnam, 2 million people in Cambodia, 2 million people in North Korea, 1 million people in Eastern Europe, 150,000 in Latin America, and 1.7 million in Africa, as well as another round 1.5 million in Afghanistan. Now, we're going to focus mainly on China and the USSR. What is counted in the USSR? Well, executions of hostages and prisoners are counted for the USSR, which um, is weird to me because communism is an economic system. And if we are to count deaths under an economic system with executions and kill, uh, prisoners that are killed and everything, then again, we have to apply those same numbers to capitalism. The United States is an imperialist capitalist nation. Britain was an imperialist capitalist or is an imperialist ca uh, capitalist nation. We have to count deaths that come from there as well. And any of those uh, any wars that have been fought on their part on top of that, if we are going to talk about hostages, prisoners and other shit that has nothing to do with economics. But those are counted in that number. What else is counted? Any murder of uh, rebellious workers or peasants. Uh, and this is a fun one. Anybody who died due to the Russian famine of 1921. A famine that was caused by a combination of armies in a civil war uh, taking food from peasants. But only if the peasants had enough, which incentivized peasants to deliberately underproduce their product and therefore starve the armies out of their occupations because the peasants would not have enough to give to the armies, which would de-incentivize the armies from being there. Uh, it also counts deaths in concentration camps which again has nothing to do with economics, Nazism, you can count deaths in concentration camps. You can count deaths from military because Nazism is a full scale ideology. Communism is less that and more an economic system. None of these things that have been counted so far are a direct result of economic systems. Also deportation of people. That was another thing that was included as a, a, a death to be considered if somebody was deported and then died because apparently deporting somebody to another country where uh, that country might have a different economic system is somehow a death under communism. Deporting people, forcing them out, all of these things are examples of authoritarianism. These are problems with authoritarian regimes. This is why it is generally good to be anti-authoritarian. But these are all counted as deaths under communism in the Black Book for some goddamn reason. Now we move on to China. In China, where 65 million people were killed, political prisoners and ethnic purges were considered. That was about 15-ish no, million people uh, within those numbers. Um, but here's the thing. Ethnic purges, that's not part of an economic system. Capitalism does not necess uh, necessitate an ethnic purge, nor does communism. Imperialism does. Nationalism might. Authoritarianism might. 
but an economic system alone? Again, if you want to apply this standard to the economic system, then you're going to have to apply that to capitalism equally. And this is not a two quo quay fallacy. It's a two quo quay fallacy if I say that this thing is not true because look at capitalism. I'm saying if you are going to call this the most evil ideology of all time, and yet we have more capitalistic nations with higher death counts, then your statement as it is worded is incorrect. Now, let's ignore the fact that China isn't even a communist nation. They have a communist party in power, but that does not make you a communist economic system. China has a state. It has wages. It definitely has classes. It does not have the actual mechanical things required to be communism. Apparently, DJ uh contextualizes Games Workshop released their statement because of an independent tournament in Sapin where someone was wearing a pro-fascist t-shirt and people refused to play with them, so they were automatically winning. The organizers then said they could kick the competitor out. They could, they could, they could kick the competitor out because it br uh, it would break uh, Spain's discrimination laws. Gotcha. Okay. And they couldn't. They could not kick them out because of discrimination laws. Neat. Yeah, that's that's a perfectly reasonable thing for Games Workshop to make a video about, or to do to make a statement on. There's there's nothing unreasonable about that. Oh, by the way, also, um, <clears throat> remember how the a famine in Russia uh, was considered a reason that people died under an economic system? That was a weird way to count those numbers, right? Well, it gets weirder when you talk about China. So the Great Chinese Famine uh, was supposed to kill about 48 million people. Uh, that's a pretty big chunk of your 100 million people dead under communism number. The official numbers, though tend to range between 15 and 30 million people on the high end, much lower than the estimates brought about in Katoy's book. But apparently, apparently, these numbers also get inflated because in the black book, they counted potential people. They counted people who might have been born. 13 million people who might have been born were counted in the numbers. People who never even existed. These weren't fetuses that, you know, happened to be part of double homicides where mothers got shot or some shit. People who were literally fabricated, who did not exist, are counted in here. If you want to talk about atrocities that China's committed against its own people, you have a long list. Go ahead, but be honest about it. Don't use fabricated numbers to inflate them. It just makes you look bad. By this logic, every murder is an infinite murder. If I kill someone today, that person's seed may have created 10 people, and those 10 people may have created 10 people each. I've actually killed 111 people, except that's not how any of this fucking works. Yeah, and they should count abortions under capitalism then. They should. Um, another thing. One of the reasons that China had its famine was because it was doing what was called its Great Leap Forward. This is where China moved a lot of their industry to factories and farming. Now, uh, factories from farming, rather. This creates a problem. When you are moving your workers, you are actually like relocating your workers from your agricultural districts into your industrial districts. You have necessarily a drop in farmers. You have fewer farmers. This creates a lower food supply as there are fewer people to work those fields. But it gets worse. Farmers became incredibly mismanaged under China's regime under this time. Public policy became to plant seeds into the ground closer, uh, further down than they needed to in an attempt to increase root growth, which uh, didn't fucking work. Pseudoscience kills you. Don't let pseudoscience kill your population, please. 
Food would also be planted close enough together to strangle and starve themselves of nutrients. Uh, so here we have this lovely thing called crop rotation where we space, we evenly space out our shit. And after crops have grown for a season, we swap them around with crops that need different nutrients. That works because science. When you engage in pseudoscience, so you get shit like a bunch of cabbages in the exact same place close together would never cause problems for each other. Also, yes, murdering a shit ton of sparrows in their local wildlife, which led to an influx of the locust population, which destroyed the crop yield that they did have. Thank you for reminding me about that one, Gentlefish. Oh, and to add on to this problem, you know what could have helped here? Imports from the United States. You know what China didn't have? Imports from the United States. So they couldn't even supplement their food supply the way that, you know, a lot of nations end up doing. Grabbing people who do have a lot of land for agriculture. Not a thing they could do. None of this is a problem of economy. Not the individual economy of the of the country, mind you. This is agricultural dismanagement. This is mismanagement of your working class. Oh, also, um, to add on to this, here's the circumstantial part. 60% of the farms in China during one of the years for this famine uh, just didn't receive rain. I, I'm 90% certain that, yes, communists definitely control whether or not the rain comes. Oh, and uh, add a little bit more here. Um, so the Black Book notes that two million of the people who died uh, in China from communism died because of a local flood. Two million. Because of floods. I'm pretty certain that Mother Nature gives a shit about my economic system. And that's why it cares about whether or not I am communist when it floods my areas. We'll listen to a little more of what Shad has to say, but I just wanted to contextualize the uh, 100 dead. Or 100 million dead. I, I, I sincerely hope that that helps a little bit in contextualizing those numbers. Killing, also class warfare, you're evil if you're rich and everything, they'll also... Nope. You've got it wrong again, Shad. Class warfare does not say that you're evil if you're rich. It is about people who own the means of production versus people who don't. Somebody can be rich and have zero access to the means of production. All they have is a handful of liquid material value. Someone can be very well off. It doesn't make them rich and it doesn't make them evil. However... Having control of the means of production when it comes to various things that are required in our society, things like food production, things like production of homes, things like health care, people who control those industries and determine who lives and who dies based on what type of a dollar sign they want to uh, add to those things. That is what class warfare is talking about. But, you know, go ahead and keep getting it wrong, Chad. I, I'm yeah. uh, destroying the concept of meritocracy and yep. stuff that, that destroying the concept of a meritocracy again, not true under a communistic system where you don't have class. It does not necessarily mean that you would not still have things assigned based on merit. The idea that merit is the, uh, that the United States is even a meritocracy is a lovely fabrication too. But anywho, DJ J says, in continuing the black box's great legacy, the uh, Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation is counting every death from COVID as a death due to communism. Oh, boy. That's, um, uh, so that's what Games Workshop is essentially supporting. Apparently. Like, I would just buy what their actions are. There is far more evidence. I'm talking about orders of magnitude evidence to say Games Workshop are communist Marxists, or they support communist Marxism yeah. um, based on their actions far more than they have any validity to accuse their player base of being fascist or anything like Absolutely. that. So one person brings a shirt that says 
fascist rhetoric has to be is unable to be kicked out of a tournament due to the problems in that country, the way it handles its discrimination laws. Games Workshop speaks out about this, and then you say that Games Workshop are Marxist communists because they don't like fascism. Please tell me you're stoned. Please tell me you are nightmarishly stoned. Also... Games Workshop. Communist? Really? The people with a hyper-privatized industry that increase the prices on all of their stuff exponentially and get incredibly mad when individual people use 3D printers to make their models? Ah, yes. Noted Communists. Capitalist Industry Games Workshop. Noted Communists. And so, you know. I dare say base chat. That's some good... Well, no, it's, 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 true. it's, it's right here. Ho ho, <laughs> based and red pelled. Based in that way, I mean, like. Yeah, I. So, uh. Thanks for calling them out. But seriously, their offices are full of crap right now, literally. Because the source is full of crap. crap. I mean, no, I'm not kidding. Literally, it happens. <laughs> so that's just a bit of. Yeah, they had a sewage system problem. Like. <laughs> that one's kind of funny. I don't like Games Workshop. I'm not even trying to defend Games Workshop here. I, I actively do not like them, and I know uh, because there's a, a pretty a pretty large Warhammer community where I live. Uh, I I get to hear crap about Games Workshop all the time. So uh, it's, justice. Yeah, it's like uh, but just a uh, you would call that karma, you know, uh, mm. yeah, just the truth being reflected back figuratively and by. Sorry, being reflected literally in yeah. what's happening figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've got just about all the context from that clip that we're going to get where this is concerned. It's a very short thing. And again, I, I want to point out once more, I do not I do not dislike Shad. I don't. I respect him a lot as a content creator. I respect the time and effort he puts into his videos. I respect the work that he's done on his channel. I do not think he's malicious. I just think he's dumb. That's where I'm at. Well, he is a Mormon, so I can't say I'm surprised. I'm not going to bring his religion into this. Yes, he may believe in a religion that is literally built upon scamming people into thinking that you can look into a hat with a set of plates with golden orbs thrown in so that you can read them that nobody else gets to read. And, oh, well, seven people saw you uh, read through them. And, oh, the founder of the religion definitely, definitely had some very, very strange leanings towards his choices in wives uh, and magic underpants are a thing in that religion yes i am i am not going to take any of that and use that against shad here again i respect him as a content creator i'm perfectly fine accepting that mormonism is also a batshit crazy cult and i would sincerely hope that he would leave it and recognize that it's a batshit crazy cult it is amazing that somebody that studies history to the extent that shad does could fall for a fucking religion like mormonism that requires the most ahistorical takes of all goddamn time. But that's not what we're here to talk about right now. What we're here to talk about is what I've already talked about. Shad, if you see this video, again, I respect the work you do. I respect the stuff that you do on your channel, for the most part. Cracknot, why? Cracknot, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Uh, da, uh, da, you fucking monster. But... Uh, it, come on, man. Come on. You gotta knock off this ahistorical shit. You're better than that. You, you really are. Come on. Anywho, if you enjoyed this topic, let me know in the comment section below. <sighs> Just... Mm. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. There's plenty of ways to support the channel in the description if you have not done so already. Oh, and also, there should be a new link in there. Uh, if you have not checked it out already, we actually have a uh, cringy piece of merchandise that, uh, that I think some of you have been waiting for because y'all are strange, uh, and I cannot control the weird side of my audience. All I can do is cater to them. Uh, but yeah, 
Uh, body pillows, Daki Makoras. They're they're in. They they they're in the merch merch store now. So uh, make of that what you will. Anyway, as always, everyone, internet video tagline here.